uh, get together in this room every week to build, share, and learn about civic tech. Uh, as you can see, we had a pretty full house tonight. I think we've run out of food, so I'm sorry, everybody, uh, who didn't get that. Uh, you're all here for a presentation, probably. Uh, Open Grid? Anybody? Who's here for Open Grid? Everybody? OK, excellent. Uh, so we'll be hearing from uh, Tom Shank and Dan O'Neill uh, in a little bit about that project. But before we get to it, uh, we usually do a couple of things uh, on the agenda. Number one, we're all, yes, I know there's a ton of us. We're all going to introduce ourselves. Uh, we'll go real quick, and you won't regret it, I promise. Uh, and then after that, we have an open floor for announcements. Uh, if you, uh, between now and getting to that, want to make an announcement, you can add it to this Google Doc that we have here. Uh, are you tweeting out the link? Uh, I will in just a second. Link. We'll tweet out the link. There's a hashtag for this event, hashtag Chai Hack Night. There's also a website for this event, chaihacknight.org, uh, which you can get to this document from either of those places. So if you have an announcement you want to make, add it there. Um, otherwise, you can just raise your hand and we'll call on you. Uh, and then we also take notes on the presentation <coughs> as well. Uh, so I think uh, we're running a little behind, so we'll get straight into the introductions. Uh, I'll go ahead and start. I'm Derek Eder. Uh, I run this event with Christopher, and uh, I like to make stuff with Civic Tech. Hi, my name is Christopher Whitaker. I'm a Civic Technology Consultant here in Chicago and part of the Code for America Brigade team. Uh, John Levy, uh, Data Program with the City of Chicago. Ben Galuski, Job Architect of the SCA Group. Gary Tuchel, Project Manager for the City of Chicago. Ashton Charlie, City of Chicago. Don Richards, Data Scientist. Kevin Rose, data scientist. Uh, no, I'm going to clear the data. You've got it. Uh, Josh Gila, open data consultant. Thanks. Mark Chicago's collaborative. Uh, I'm working with Cook County and open data. <laughs> Joel Hewlett, public information officer for the Cook County Bureau of Technology. Carl Bull, part of that. Thanks, right? Jenny Vance, I'm uh, president of Logan Square. Stephen Vance, I'm a transportation planner with Street Block Chicago. Me, I'm a Bruce Wallace, and I'm Bruce Wallace. I use the NAs. I work for a direct project in Philson. My name is Nate. I am uh, a freelance community engagement guy. John Krause, I'm yes, from Chicago. So, I'm Alan. Alan Hill, I'm Kevin Mark. I'm Rush Hills. I'm Rush Hills. I'm Rush I'm Steve Edgar, I'm a commoner and a facilitator of all things like <laughs> Hi guys, uh, Kevin, I'm a uh, Microsoft Tech Fellow, and I'm also part of uh, New Chicago. Um, I'm a tech team. So, I'm 
trying to learn how to make this fun. I'm George, uh, I'm a grad student at all three families. Hello, Yash, I'm a scientist uh, on Sirium. I'm Scott Ross, and I'm currently the second person here with public radio background, and now I'm a uh, JavaScript developer for hire. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Nick. I'm a recovering lawyer. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm the chief here in Tennessee from the Department of Human Services. I'm also here at IIT Spaces. Um, sorry for that short. I'm a professor in the United States. I used to be a new chef. I'm Brian Burroughs, I'm a software developer. Maybe an Elliot Tom and Watch Center. I'm 
I'm Daniel X O'Neill, I'm a local poet. Uh, you can look up my books on Amazon.com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else? This guy? Did you say hi? Uh, Tom Shank, Chief Data Officer. I'll be talking here in a second. <laughs> uh, anybody else we miss? Okay, excellent. That wasn't so bad, right? Now you know who's in the room. Apparently, all of you Chicago is here. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, or all the people who at least graduated from there. So, uh, let me do the one last thing. Oh, yeah. So, before we get into announcements, uh, if you're looking for the restrooms, they are down there and to the left. You can grab uh, two drinks from the soda machines, but not any of the alcohol. And uh, after the presentations, we will have question and answer. Please remember that it's question and answer, not question, answer, and commentary. So if you start not talking and not asking a question, uh, I will buzz you out. We need a big gong, basically. Yeah. I have requisitioned <laughs> a gong. Um, excellent. So we'll get into the announcements. I'll go ahead and start reading the ones off of the dock here. Um, but like I said, when we get to the end of that, uh, you can raise your hand and share. Um, I've broken it out since we have so many announcements. Uh, on this particular one into announcements, events, and jobs. Uh, so uh, we'll go in that order. Um, the quick first, uh, Chai Hacknet shirts. Anybody wearing a Chai Hacknet shirt? Or maybe under like several layers? OK, well, anyways, we have them. They're $11. We have them in small and medium. I know I need to order more. Uh, but if you want one, they're 11 bucks. Um, Steve Vance wrote a blog post on last week's presentation. Um, do you want to maybe give a little spiel about that? Sorry, put you on the spot. Uh, so Branson was a journalist who was responsible for suing the city to get the Laquan McDonald shooting video released, and he talked about it last week about how he used uh, a FOIA law, the Freedom of Information Act, to demand documents, documents and material from the city. It's the only way that when you ask the city that they have to reply, they need to reply uh, in negative or in positive supply documents. So sometimes you just want to call an agency and ask, I have the data, they can tell you no. But if you submit a FOIA request, they have to tell you no in a really well documented sheet and take one of seven exemptions. So this kind of uh, summarizes all the tips that Brandon uh, was able to pass on to us. Also, there's a video of his presentation, and I just wrote the blog post. Cool. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Cool, so related to that, Civic Hacking will be televised. You'll notice that there are two very nice cameras here in this room. Uh, so we had um, our friends from Scrappers Film Group, you want to wave, I guess, uh, record last week's presentation uh, kind of on a pro bono thing. And it was so great that we wanted to do it for every presentation. So we asked around and got some funding from Microsoft to record the next 20 or so presentations the same way. So you're going to have high def video to watch as a keepsake. We're going to have a YouTube channel. It's going to be the best. Uh, huh? Yeah, that's next, right? You guys got one of those 360 things? We'll just do that. Yeah. It'll be 3D. Yeah, it'll be cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so excellent. Yay. Thank you, Microsoft. Thank you, Scrappers. Um, and it'll be a great way to, to share the rest of these presentations with the rest of the world. Um, this is another one we've had for a while now. Let's just check to see where he's at. Um, the, uh, a former presenter uh, here, uh, Tracy Siska from the Chicago Justice Project, has a change.org petition to uh, ask the state's attorney to open up their data. Um, he's asking for around 1,000, and he has 160. So please sign this petition if you believe in open data. Um, this is a blog post that LISC put together, uh, Civic Tech Done Right, community-driven, responsive, and community-friendly. Uh, it's a blog post about some of the work that uh, I did with DataMade uh, and a group, uh, someone from, no, someone from Resurrection Projects here. We work with SWAP, uh, Southwest Organizing Project, uh, to basically help them get some data uh, in an accessible way. And so it's kind of a cool story, sort of walking through that journey of how, how we got there and made some pretty cool stuff along the way. Uh, so feel free to read that. Uh, Coder Dojo Chai, was someone there? Yeah, hey, tell us about that. Hi. Uh, so we are a nonprofit teaching kids program for free. Age 7 to 17 is our target. We've been, ooh, 2013 we started. Uh, everything is volunteer fun. Uh, we need volunteers. Uh, 
like it's every Saturday now. It's growing wow. super fast. Uh -huh. And uh, it's super easy to join. We have a Slack channel if you want to join us or just go online, click on volunteer, register, and just come to the orientation in Holland. And then you can see some amazing kids. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Uh, OK, that's it for um, those kinds of announcements. Any non-event announcements to make? Yeah? Yeah? Oh, it's also non-job, also. Okay. <laughs> Is that your, your job thing? Yeah. OK, yes. I'm Lionel. I work here for Nutrina. I just want to tell you guys a little space. Yeah, please. So we're really excited to have you guys here. It's awesome like have you guys over week, but in order for that to keep happening, um, we just had a couple ground rules, uh, such as like don't take any of the alcohol beverages from the first place. Yeah. Um, and also like you can grab a soda or something that's really fine. Look yourself like one or two, don't be crazy. Don't. And uh, if you can stick around in like these kind of meeting rooms in this area, like roughly you know close to this atrium room or in the kitchen, that would be awesome. Because uh, there are people like trying to work on like down there in the office. Uh, and finally, don't go to the bar. <laughs> what bar? There's no bar. Yeah, yeah, no bar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, Lana. Uh, okay, moving on to events. Uh, Hack Illinois, uh, February 19th through 21st. Um, someone, um, I think, Carl, did you sh did you know more about this? Or do you want to, could you tell me, tell a little more about it? Well, sure. Um, the, this is all I know about it. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, it's University of Illinois students. Um, Get students together in groups of like five, ten, or so. Um, I think there's some hundred or a hundred and some students uh, to work on these knowledge projects. Some of them is all part of their own with the software, uh, or it's open source software. And the students, uh, they improve it for the project. And apparently, this is the third year of this history of the students who get involved in the project continue to stay involved. So if you're interested in being a mentor or maybe you know some students down there, or you are a student down there, uh, check out the website, hack it on the org, uh, to see if they can get involved. And if you want to ask me one question, you can ask me. Okay, thanks, Carl. Uh, Hive Chicago Buzz, is Robert here or anybody from Hive or anybody going to this event here? Yeah? Yeah, um, yeah Robert's not invited, but yeah, this is uh, going to be a new uh, uh, Saturday. Basically, a bunch of uh, work in the city, a bunch of challenges. Uh, click on that link, check it out. Um, you know, Saturday is the main sort of action, but if you want to come to the community, you can see everyone. Great, thank you. Uh, all right, uh, moving on. Uh, State of the Black Tech Ecosystems, Fabian here. I think I saw him. Hey. Yeah, so uh, our event is uh, next Thursday, and the focus of the event and of the initiative is how we can unlock the full potential of the Black Tech community here in Chicago. So we're bringing together about 10 to 15 of some of the dynamic Black Tech organizations that are making change in the city. So we're going to be showcasing them through four tent style talks as well as information. Uh, we have just exceeded our 300, 300 RSVPs, uh, so it's uh, super packed. If you have trouble, uh, if you still are trying to come, you might have to, you fill out that form, but you might have to contact me and I'll see you. Awesome, thanks. Uh, Ally Skills Workshop, anybody here know about that? Uh, Ally Skills Workshop teaches men technology simple, everyday ways to support women in their workplaces and communities. Uh, and that is on February 10th at 5.30. Um, oh, I got one. Uh, we have these open leadership meetings. Uh, if anybody's, uh, that's tonight, uh, around 8 o'clock or 8.30. Uh, if anybody's interested in how we run this event and wants to give any feedback, uh, you're welcome to join. We have a couple of different things to talk about on the agenda already, but we're always open to new suggestions. So uh, if anybody's interested in that, um, I'll be coming around later um, uh, to tell everybody about when that's happening. Um, Northwest, Northern uh, Illinois University Code Across event. You know this one, Christopher? Hi. So, uh, Code Across is an annual hackathon uh, run by Code for America each year. Uh, it coincides with International Open Data Day. There's hackathons uh, being held all over the country and with our partners across the globe. 
Uh, one of them is going to be at Northern Illinois University. They want to quote for America's first university brigades. Uh, they held a student hackathon in the fall that had 300 people. Uh, and now they are looking for mentors for their March 5th event. If you're interested, uh, feel free to email me at cwhitaker at codeforamerica.org. Thank you. Cool. All right. Um, before I move into jobs, any other announcements, event-related announcements? OK. Jobs. Uh, Dev Bootcamp, one of our sponsors, hey, hey, they're hiring a community marketing manager. Uh, so if you're interested in that, we got a link to the doc. Um, is the state of Illinois still hiring a chief data officer? The position has not been filled? OK. Well, if you want to do this job, you should click on this link, and it could be pretty cool. Uh, is it paid? Huh? Is it paid? Uh, I believe so. I believe so. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how what the compensation is. Uh, City of Chicago is still hiring a data scientist? We are. The uh, position is going to be open through the weekend. Uh, you'll be working on the data science team. Uh, you get to work on predictive analytics projects, analytics for policy uh, decision making, and work on projects similar to what we're going to discuss here today. Very cool. Pension project seeks our developer. Is this a paid position? Uh, it's paid in the usual way. They have nine. So we are so close to finishing uh, our first model. We lost our R developer. We have some great source code. There's a link to the GitHub. We need somebody to help us uh, implement some of our uh, visualization tweet tweaks and get us over the goal line. So it'd be a great chance for you to attach your name to a project that will probably get you a lot of uh, uh, visibility. So we're waiting for your resume. Are, are you guys using Chinese? Yes, we are. Okay. A prospect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, any other jobs or general announcements before we get to our feature presentation? Yeah. Oh, wait. Sorry. Yes, of course. Part two. Yeah. We're always looking for top engineers. Cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, uh, so Tom and Dan, you guys want to come on down? Do, are you presenting off of this or uh, off of yours? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, then. Uh, Without further ado, uh, Tom Shank, Dan O'Neill, and Open Drift. We got to get a little up here so we can do the screen sharing a little bit. Uh, but I can at least recite the first few slides off uh, rote memory. So we've had an open data portal here for about four years. Uh, we were one of the first, and we're one of the pioneers in terms of the data that we've been able to release. And we continue to add to that on a day-to-day -day basis. But one of the important things, though, that we keep hearing is it's not always available to everybody. You know, there's a huge, talented tech community uh, throughout Chicago, and then there's a very special community that sits in this room right here. I'm not sure if you guys realize, when I go to other cities, when I talk to other mayors, you guys get talked about by other mayors. They go, what do you do in Chicago? I said, well, we facilitate as much, but we don't run the community. I stay in the back, and that's very intentional. I don't run this, and I don't want to indicate that I do. So we've had this wonderful opportunity where a lot of you guys have been able to do special projects and to be able to contribute meaningfully to the overall ecosystem. But at the same time, there's people like my parents and people that I know on a day-to-day -day basis who can't quite do that because the portal's not quite there. So that's something that we've been doing since 2011. At the same time, starting about 2012, there was an internal project that was started by the previous CEO, the one who hired me, and I took over his position, but Gold Steve. And he worked on this project called Windy Grid. Windy Grid was an internal project. Oh, hey, we got this up. Yeah. Uh, so we got Data Portal uh, 2011 till present. Well, we had this internal project called Windy Grid. And Windy Grid was for internal situational awareness. How do we tell what's happening in city? And it, was, it got sparked by a question from the chief of staff at the time. Why do I need to go to a bunch of different departments and a bunch of different commissioners to find out what's happening in the city? Windy Grid was a response to that. It was an internal business intelligence application, and it had always been internal. And there comes a conflict that I always had in my head. If this department, my team in particular, was going to go down this path of using open source. Both, and oh, and when you did use uh, MongoDB, which is open source, and it used Java, but it had some Flash in there, which kind of sucked, but you know, that's all. <clears throat> but if we're going to do this, why, why uh, you know, how do we have this project that was very important internally 
but in itself not being open source. So there's sort of a bit of conflict that we have. And a number of different things too, because throughout this project, we're getting feedback from users. Whereas 33,000 city employees, several hundred of them had access to this application beginning of 2012 going forth. Using on a day to day basis, they varied. Some of them were really good, uh, like you guys, and some of them were not as technical, right? So they needed to have something that was a bit friendly. And at the same time, we're getting this feedback from them, and we're tweaking this application. Well, this was a feedback mechanism that's also useful. Uh, because of that difference in users, uh, we thought, well, what about open sourcing? What about taking this application, building it up, building a new uh, stack around to get into the stack and how we build it. And what if we build this not only for our internal users, make it better internally for us, but also make this available to others? Because if it's useful internally for us to be able to answer the questions that many of our folks have day to day, and some of the questions are very fundamentally the same what's happening around me, what's happening over in this part of Chicago, uh, what happened yesterday, what happened last year, what's happening right now. Why can't we leverage that and use that also to help the public? And then also by making it open source, by being able to collaborate with you guys, to be able to add features, to be able to have these open conversations. We've already had some great conversations today talking about trying to troubleshoot some tech. Steve and I were talking about some ways of trying to uh, tackle some of the, uh, the, the wonkiness that we're having with the ArcGIS, right? So this is helpful. This is helpful. So far, with all the open source projects that we've released so far, I estimate, this is my estimate, I estimate that we've had about 150 hours contributed to the city through pull requests. For people taking a look at something and saying, hey, here's a new feature. We have a number of examples of that. Some features that we had on the roadmap, some other features that we did not have on the roadmap to fix bugs. So this is how we can collaborate together. So I want to show you the family tree. We have Windy Grid 1, what we call Windy Grid 1.0. This is something that you guys never saw except for, I think, four or five screenshots uh, that get mentioned in articles, including one that I just showed you now. And then we built Open Grid. So Open Grid, as I told you before, is now built completely with open source technologies. Uh, uh, lots of JavaScript, basically. Java, it's, it's an amalgamation of JavaScript libraries at the end of the day, like many projects are. So this is what you see, but the Open Grid code base actually fits, in, fits into what we call Windy Grid 2. Windy Grid still exists. Windy Grid is the internal application, the internal port of what we've done. There's some custom code modifications that are very particular to the city of Chicago, such as our authentication mechanism. The one that you see publicly, there's no authentication. It doesn't make sense. It's open to the public. Internally, we use authentication mechanism, and we have different tiers of security. So we have those internal tweaks that are very, very particular to us that we call Windy Grid. So 95, 99% of the code base is the exact same. We do a couple of tweaks, and voila, we have Windy Grid. So when you see Open Grid, you are actually seeing the foundation of Windy Grid. That means when we make an improvement, that improvement's likely going to go to Open Grid. So this is not just a project that we shoved out there, and then that was it. We're continuing to modify it because we're also getting feedback for our Intel system. That also means when you make a contribution or you see something like Open Grid or make some sort of way to improve Open Grid, whether that's just identifying an issue or actually making a contribution, you're actually also improving the application that we have internally as well. So this is collaboration. This was architected so we could collaborate in the future. Not here's an application that's public and it really only exists in the public realm, but bits of your code is actually going to come into the city and influence city operations. So we've been able to, and we, it took some thought. We first thought this is going to be easy and this is all we need to do. But it took some thought architecturally. How do we bridge this gap? So it's not just a public project. It's not just an internal project, but can it span both regions given these kind of a uh, couple of technical things. So as I mentioned before, when you contribute to OpenGrid, you're also contributing to the public version, OpenGrid.io or Chicago.OpenGrid.io, but you're also contributing to WindyGrid itself. And by contributing to WindyGrid, you're also helping the city of Chicago and what we're able to do in terms of delivering services, whether or not that's public health, whether or not it's public safety, our licensing and, and consumer protection bureau, all that feeds in together. <clears throat> so when we architected this, we have these kind of three layers that we always refer to. 
One is open grid, the user interface. And the back end here is what we call, it's not displaying as quite as well, it's called the service layer. So the, the interfaces should be about the same, you know, no matter what we're doing. But I mean, in addition that there's going to be differences in data sources, right? We're going to want to use MongoDB for our internal version, which we did. We're also going to want to maybe make this public. And that's how Planario fits into this. Planario is a whole different project. Now, there's a few people in here. Can you raise your hand? Uh, we don't have everybody in here. Can you raise your hand if you worked on the Planario project in any sort of way? Look around you. All right, so we got about a handful of people, about five people, and that's not all. Uh, not all of the University of Chicago is here because we got some non <laughs> But we have a handful of people working around the room, and, and many others who will come to these things, who worked on this project. And Planario is an API endpoint which combined data from the open data form. And we said, hey, wait, they already did the data storage work. When it comes to public data, they already did the work to bring that together. And creating an API that was kind of nifty. What if we take this thing that we developed internally, and we're going to open source anyway, but what if we take that and we put that on top of Planaria, and then voila, we have OpenGrid, the same interface that we've been using internally. And I'm going to show OpenGrid here in a second. Uh, but we also now are able to layer this on top of open data, and layer on top of work that has already been done, also an open source project. Now this is, this is the civic tech community working together. Right? But you also get the different flavors of open. You get uh, open grid, the one that's going with Planario. This is opengrid.io. And then when you grid, this particular uh, flavor, which is the one that we use internally. But anybody else could use this as well. This is all open source. So you just take the user interface, you pair it with a service layer that you want to operate with, uh, and which data storage you want to operate with, and you put it together, and you can deploy it. So we would recommend, if you want to deploy it internally, you probably want to use Mongo. That's just a simpler thing to do. But if you want to use open data, if you're Austin, Texas, New York City, San Francisco, a number of these different things are already on Planario, just slap it on top of Planario, and your work is done. So this is us, again, not only operating within the public, but also trying to build off of projects that have already been there. Because, again, in Chicago, we're unique here. We have these projects that have been done. So many of these projects have been done. And so we're interested in trying to layer on top of the work that you've come here to do or that you are hired to do by academic partners or nonprofits. So that's teamwork. <laughs> Can you guys read the subtext there? I'm waiting for them. All right. <laughs> so let's show you Open Grid. Let's go through a couple of quick steps here. I'm going to launch this into a new tab. I'm going to come back to this page because I do want to point out a couple of important things. So this is Open Grid. It's a map, it's a leaflet based map. Uh, which gives you some really nice things to do. This was really important to us. For instance, if it was actually have some sort of rain outside, we'd be able to overlay weather maps very easily. This is actually a really easy thing to do. Or we can take a look at uh, what the temperature is, which basically you're going to get a lot of uh, a nice, cool-looking blue that's layered on top of this, but lets us avoid that. If you're a real nerd, look at sea level pressure. Um, So we can take a quick look at some things, All right, right? So we can take a look at business licenses. What zip code are we in right now? Six so, so. so we can take a look at business licenses. We have this quick search bar there because I think this is the future. I think the open good of the future is that quick search bar that I have a love hate with relationship right now because eventually people are just going to want to type in text and find out all the data. So we're this is one of those small steps towards that process. So here's uh, the, the first thousand business licenses within 60654. All right, this is nice, and it's cute, and you can do things like look for the Wrigley Building. And if you type a fully qualified address, a fully qualified address, you can get uh, other buildings as well, such as my office, uh, 333 South State Street, Chicago, Illinois. 60604. Right, you just have to type in a thousand. And so already we know where one of the weak points are. It's 
in our GIS geocode. But <laughs> so this is one way to interact with it. This is one way to interact with it. But really how we interact with it within the city of Chicago is through this so-called advanced search feature. Now one thing that we want to do is we want to put some common queries out there. And this is actually one area where we'd love your feedback. We have a list of common queries here that might be just interesting. One thing that OpenGrid can do, it can, like anything else, it can tell where you're at. We don't, we don't store that information. We use normal geolocating processes. So let's take a look at Open311 requests around us right now. And let me just do a quick peek here. I'm looking at a radius of an eighth of a mile. That's not too much. Let's extend that out to three quarters of a mile. Huh? So as we start pulling in the records, this is three quarters of a mile around us. It has our geolocation a little bit off. It has us on the other side of the river, but that's just how it goes. Every single one of these colors represents a different type of service request. So this is a quick way where we can pull up service requests by using this common query. And we're interested in seeing what other common queries there might be. Something that's pretty low. You know, why make somebody go through the hurdles of a query? Just give them the answer that they're looking for. So you can take a look at there. Things that we thought might be broadly interesting, filming locations across Chicago, to look at where Dick Wolf is going to be filming his next thing. Street closures, potholes near me, restaurants <laughs> passing initial inspection, uh, which is interesting because these are restaurants that are probably going to be open soon if they pass an initial inspection. But you can build your own query as well. Let me actually clear everything out. You can build your own query by adding your own data sets. So for instance, we imagine crime is going to be popular. And you know what happens when crime and street lights are out? There's one street light out. And here's when all street street lights are out. If you're interested in seeing this happen, there are stories on this not that long ago about street lights being out and potentially crime. There's some reasonable sense that make these things go together. And you can build queries, so you can do further filtering on top of this as well using these drop-down menus. So you can build the queries as you work. We think this is easier than what it has been. You're making that forward progress from what you have to do with the data portal. If you did on the data portal, you have to download these things, match them together, and be able to be able to then map it in some sort of way. So we also want to look at a drawn extent. So we want to draw on the map and look at particular areas in Chicago. So I'll look at a drawn extent, and I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit here. I'll take a drawn extent here in the big loop area, and then I'll just use a kind of made up shape. So when we run this query, it should only appear within those areas. This works on a phone too. Uh, 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 so you can draw on a map on your phone and take a look at it. Lighting, I get it. <laughs> And you can pull this up in this what we call the grid. Uh, so you can take a look at the results uh, at the row level detail. You can obviously click on the results if you want. But you can also try to find it here. And you can also filter here if you want. I'm looking at uh, uh, crimes, for instance. Uh, uh, what's the word? CTA, right? Some of these crimes occur on CTA trains or bus stops. So I can further filter really quick to look for results I'm looking for. And then I can go through and I can click on the dots as well to be able to pull it up. For those who love their heat maps, you can make a heat map of these things. Let me zoom out just to capture the results there. Well, I got a bunch of those dots. That's not fun. So I'm doing a heat map of uh, crimes. So let me take off all the dots and just let me take a look at the heat map. So if I want to get rid of the heat map and I just want to take a look at the dots, I can do that as well. I didn't, sorry, I didn't color these dots differently, so it's all a homogenous color. You can also do some basic graphing. This is actually something that we're going to do better. We're going to take a lot of notes from the Planario project here. But of the areas that I looked at, if I want to look at a, a simple pie graph of the ward of where these crimes 
took place at. I can just select that little graphing feature and I can create these little pie charts. So I can see that uh, in Ward 24 there was 45 crimes. And those were just within the areas I selected. I didn't select all the wards perfectly. But if I did want to look at something by ward, I can actually take a look at selection within a ward. So if I do want to take a look at all this data, but only in Ward 24, because 24 was the biggest part of the pie chart, I can modify the query to do that as well. I'm using the same parameter, the same 311 data. Same crime as well. So now I'm just looking at Ward 24. And again, I can pull up this data. And I said, OK, now I have something I want. And I actually want to keep this. And I do want to mess with the data. I can download that into a CSV, Excel, uh, or PDF if you then want to run a scraper on the PDF. It's actually <laughs> really good practice if you really want to scrape from PDF. Get it from a machine readable, put it into a PDF, and then rescrape it. Uh, <laughs> Rube Goldberg would be just <laughs> so happy with what you've done. <laughs> Uh, and then you can select comms. You can do all these little other little things. Now, if you do want to take a look, uh, let me go back. Uh, well, uh, uh, just one second here. Let me clear off my query. And let me just do something really quick across the city. Let me just look at all the filming locations. And also, when you use the common query, it populates the query. So it teaches you how you can build a query. That's our other hope as well. It gets you something interesting, and you can see the, uh, the principal components of it. So we're going to take a look at the filming locations across the city of Chicago. And then as soon as you have it, you can make a heat, uh, not, you can make a heat map. We already discussed that, such as that, yay, heat maps. But you can also look at a tile map as well. So we selected the tile map which more or less is showing a very similar thing as you've done before. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> so these are the principal components of, of what we're taking a look at here. And let me just take off everything that we've done so far. So I've zoomed back into our locations. So you can draw on the map. You can take a look at contextually what's happening around you. You can look at things that are happening across the entire city. So one of the things that we, we hear from people, I use the open data portal to take a look at data of the neighborhood I'm thinking about moving to. Well, this makes an operation like this much easier. I did that too. I looked at the crimes, I looked at this other data, so I looked at that, I looked at that, and I kind of pieced it together, but yeah, hey. Right. So this is how we're able to bring together, but again, this is the one that's running against Planario. So by Planario being there, we're able to build on top of that, which gets us back to teamwork. But for us to be able to do that, we had to form another partnership. We had to work with the Smart Chicago Collaborative to be able to build that component out because we were interested in Mongo, we were interested in the case that we had in the city of Chicago, but then we ended up talking with Dan. So I'd like to turn over to Dan and talk about his bit, what Smart Chicago Collaborative was able to do. Awesome. This is a, uh, so Open Grid is a real testament to Tom, um, leadership of the city and his team, and this vision that he described of building on existing things like Mario that, that you know, people in this room have made, people in the city have made. Um, the city has a long history of being a leader in mapping um, you know, for the public good. I want to talk a little bit about that today, but first I want to talk about, so Smart Chicago Collaborative. I know I've worked with, we had a show of hands with people I've worked with here in this room. It'd be a lot of hands, right? Anybody here ever uh, worked with Smart Chicago Collaborative? All right. Um, and uh, we'd also be remiss. It's awesome that, that uh, there's, there's filming here. We'd be remiss if we didn't bring up the fact that there's someone in this room who has filmed hundreds of hours of this meeting. And that name of that person is Christopher Whitaker. Three, three, four years ago, I found him a junky webcam and uh, sent him over here to to, to do that. We have hundreds of hours on the Smart Chicago Collaborative YouTube uh, uh, website of, of uh, incredible meetings that have happened in this really great um, uh, chat night. So one thing that um, at, at Smart Chicago Collaborative, we're a civic tech organization that is pretty comprehensive and kind of different than, than most of we, that we've seen. We focus on access to the internet because we think that's at the core of everything. You can make all the maps you want all the technology you want, shove it out into the world. 
nobody has internet access, nobody will be able to do anything. We focus on digital skills quite a bit because if you have a connection to the internet and you don't know how to use it, that's really not much use to you. Um, so it's access skills and then data, projects like this that we really care about. So we have a software philosophy, and I really encourage everybody here to develop your own software philosophy. Why do you make software? How do you make it? What is, what is your what is, what is your underlying philosophy for the creation of software? And our software philosophy is that we create the smallest amount of software. We believe in making the smallest amount of software to be useful to the largest amount of people and connecting residents to their government, um, uh, their institutions, and each other. And this is a great example of that. Um, at Smart Chicago, we always, when Tom was talking about the service layer, that's all we did. We helped them think about it. We um, created that service layer uh, with a vendor by the name of U-Turn Data Solutions that does great stuff. They handle all of our um, Amazon Web Services stuff. Um, Stephen, you've talked to them at 11 o'clock at night sometimes, trying to figure out what the hell's going on with the city cake. Um, to some wow, success they're and some in DC also. So it's some good <laughs> shit for me, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, so we also, we, uh, we have for years, uh, offer free hosting on the Amazon Web Service for lots of people. Anybody here have ever used the Amazon Web Hosting? Wow, really? Cool. <laughs> I've never met some of you that it, what's the site that you had like? Oh no, I mean on Smart Chicago. I met on the oh. Smart Chicago thing. Uh, for free. <laughs> for free. Let's see. For, 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 I think. Heroku, Mapbox, all sorts of stuff. Anyway. Point is that um, we try to be as helpful as we can with the little little amount that we could possibly have, and that's what we did. We really didn't do all that much. It was the incredibly great work of Planario, the incredibly solid uh, con conceptual model that Tom and his, and his team came, came up with, and the great work of Wendy Grid and the city contractors that worked on Wendy Grid. So we just did a little. We took that existing work, we're expanding the field with new civic tech developers, with companies that are already in the field but don't know about this particular field, improving on existing work. I mean, you know, once people start whacking up against your website, there might be some problems that you'll, that you'll learn. That's a normal tech project. We certainly found that in Planario and certainly found that in, in um, a lot of the things that we're trying to work on and just proving the value. Um, before I hand it over back over to Tom, I just wanted to talk some, some history and perspective. Um, as I said, Chicago has a great history of creating um, map-based websites that seem to you know, show you for situational awareness. Um, and um, going back at least um, uh, to uh, you know the, the Chicago Police Department uh, ClearPath website that was launched in, in 1996 on Windows 95. You could go into a police station Go to a terminal and use a Windows 95 machine and look up dots on a map. Um, and Adrian Holovani. Adrian Holovani in May two, uh, 2005, have you ever seen ChicagoCrime.org? So yeah, ChicagoCrime.org right here in Chicago before there was ever a Google Maps API. My colleague um, Adrian Holovani created ChicagoCrime.org. Um, again, taking incredible uh, work of government employees, government technologists that did all that clear path stuff, right? And of course, now we look at clear path, we like to laugh at it, and we like to think that it's, you know, an ancient beast. Um, it is the basis upon which all of this is, is going on. It's really important to remember our history um, here in Chicago. That stuff is incredibly important. Um, and then uh, I started a project called Chicago Works for You. That was in 2005 for uh, the previous mayor. There used to be another mayor. You know that? In Chicago, there used to be a different mayor. Great. Good to remember these things. Just to say these things out loud sometimes, you know? So we had another mayor in May 2005, and I was a technologist, and I. Uh, Created this project called Chicago Works for You. It looks pretty similar, right? Just dots on a map, took the building permit, stuff like that. It was scrapped, never got launched. Um, but that's life. So, and then I, I hooked up with my friend Adrian Halabadi, and um, 
we started with, with some others. Uh, every block, um, so many, so many, so many, so every block the website from 2007 to 2008, the full video, the local the public information. Again, dots on the map. Same kind of stuff. And it turns out, so the, the, the last thing I want to leave you with is at Smart Chicago, the more work I do, the more technology I make, the more people I interact with, the more crap I try to do to help make let technology make lives better here in Chicago, for the 1.9 million of them that aren't in this room, the more I do that, the more I find it's the basic digital skills that really matter. And going out and finding those people and finding out what it is that they need. Because it turns out that all these dots on the map haven't led to communion among the police and the people. And the police are killing our youth in this city, right? There are no dots on any map to stop that from happening. There's no set of crime statistics that stop that from happening. So we have to find ways to have communion with those people who aren't here, okay? When I found out where Laquan McDonald was killed, and you probably saw the video too, it looks like a desolate spot, doesn't it? It's an odd, you know, space. So I looked it up on a map. It's a block away from uh, Kronos Euros. It's a half block away. Away from the Greater Chicago Food Depository. It's right in front of a place called um, uh, uh, Focal Point Light. It's 400 Chicago. It's actually a, a vigorous place in this city, Archer Heights, full of economic development. Um, there aren't any dots in the map that can tell you that. Um, uh, that can't tell you uh, what it feels like to go to work there and uh, what it uh, feels like to not be in communion with your city. So um, with that, I'll uh, turn it back over and I'll uh, speak on. So just to wrap it up here, the thing I want to kind of impress upon is building on top of each other collaboration because that, that's the underlying thing that is important about this project. I have a mapping service now that hopefully is going to be more user friendly. But to be able to build upon that, it needs to be collaboration from here on out. And so our open grid development, in some total, probably about $250,000. Planario, I asked about that team, and they spent about $350,000 for that work. So in total now, we have this project that's greater than the investment of the city of Chicago made. Right? And that's really important. This whole entire notion that we spent a little bit of money, and we're able to get a lot more out of it because somebody else already did the work. That's the point of open source. That's the point of this community. And we're really happy that we have a, a good example of that at this point. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's really priceless. Uh, I did this presentation two minutes before I showed up. And I'm, just, I'm remembering commercials I saw once and just bringing it all together. I, uh, and, and, and it's really uh, very helpful. We're on AW, we're running this on AWS. Uh, the city of Chicago won an award last year. Uh, we didn't talk about it much. Uh, but we have $50,000 of free AWS time. And so this is also going to transform us internally as well, of, of reshaping how we're doing our deployments uh, and, and our internal operations that we, we don't really talk about publicly that much. So I told you I want to bring you back to this page to close it up with. What Smart Chicago Collaborative built was the service layer here, a bit of Java code that can talk to Planario's as opposed to talking to Mongo. For the tech folks, between the service layer and the user interface, there's an API that's discussing with each other. So as long as you can get to the point where the API can understand the data it's being handed, no matter what the data source is, uh, Open Grid can work. And so whether or not it's Mongo, whether or not it's Planario, another data source, Hadoop, whatever the technology might be at the time, that's how we're going to be able to evolve this over a period of time. But to be able to do this well, we need to document well. So for instance, when we take a look at the API that's talking between the service layer and the UI, we have this user documentation. But not only just for the developers, not only just for the developers, but also for the end users as well. So there's pretty robust documentation here for the end users. We'll be producing videos and things like that to be able to help out. 
But as we go forward, what I'm going to be very interested in, especially with this community, because now we have this ability. We've intentionally architected so we can collaborate with you to give us feedback of where the issues are. And if you want to be able to give feedback where the issues, many of you know where it's going to be at. It's going to be on our issue tracker. So if you see bugs, we want to hear about it on the, on the repo, right? Because when we architect it this way, when we go through this extent, it's now an experiment of how much is the community willing to work with us on this. This is one if, if not the only city where we're going to be able to do this sort of experiment. We're going to also be doing something a little bit different. You're going to be able to uh, discuss with us through email. We're going to have, we have a Google form as well, so if you want to discuss with us, we'll be putting announcements there about uh, uh, future developments. We heavily use the wiki pages uh, for Open Grid, where we talk about roadmap proposals, big things. Like, do we want to be able to click on the map and be able to see a, a Google Street View image where we just clicked? Right, what else have I thought about? Um, what about natural language processing in that search bar where you can just type, show me crimes in Rogers Park? Right? Wouldn't that be just a much better idea as opposed to that filling out a big form on the side of the screen? What about instead of you know, drawing on a map, can we, can we improve that process so you can choose an area to take a look at? We're also going to be introducing something a little bit different as well. We're going to be having open developer calls as well. So other organizations, nonprofits, academia, those here, some of our developer meetings that we have every single week will actually be public meetings as well. You'll be able to dial in. So if you want to figure out more, you want to be more into the stream of what's happening, we're going to open up those communication channels so you can see what's happening, so you can hear what we're discussing as our next major releases. So you can give us feedback, and that's what we need. We've been working with City of Chicago. We've been working with those users for, they've been running off this for uh, the Windy Grid version uh, for uh, a little over a month. We've been developing this over essentially over the course of three years now. But now it's the public's turn to get back to us and say, okay, how can we make this better? And how can we continue to improve this to make this a viable platform uh, to navigate data? So that's all I have. OpenGrid.io, github.com slash Chicago slash OpenGrid. Those are the important links. And we hope to work with you soon. So that's all I have. So this is also something that Smart Chicago does a fantastic job of, right? Civic user testing group. And so right now my team is working on formulating uh, the submission to ask Smart Chicago to have a cut group or to bring people across Chicago. Dan has designed this beautifully of making sure it's equitably distributed, not just River North, Lakeview, uh, in the Loop area, but residents from across Chicago that are not necessarily uh, uh, technically savvy. And that's our first stop of, to be able to get some sort of feedback into this process. And again, I do think that uh, City of Chicago employees are also valuable as well to get to every employee's hands as opposed to just uh, the technically literate because they represent that same, they, they represent a user base that is not always uh, the most technically savvy. Uh, but between those two, those are our first two steps in getting feedback from a, a large team. Uh, and obviously, in, in, by implication, when you have such a, a large release like this, you're going to get everyday people. Uh, giving us feedback. We'll get emails about this as well. A uh, number of times I've had a, uh, an older uh, uh, person email me saying, I'm trying to find out where the liquor license are in my neighborhood, and they're using the data portal, but they put the magnifying glass. If it gets to work, I'm like, well, we just have to get into it. Right, so we get those feedback, and we, we deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is, these are real issues, right? It's no different than many people I know, including my own mother, would uh, interact with the data portal. Um, which, what and how fast is your uh, data set all up? Uh, for adding new data sets to this? It's going to be fairly rapid. Because of how Planario is set up, we're going to be able to uh, include more data sets with a relative ease. So basically, our big things is if we have a data set that has a lot long on it and we have a timestamp associated with it, it's pretty easy for us to get that wrapped into uh, Planario. Yes? In the right map, is there any lines that we're creating, like generating? 
This is a really good question because internally in Wind Grid, uh, we've been receiving that request for about two years now. But we've been thinking through who we want to do that, how we want to do that. Uh, uh, so we've certainly been thinking about because of the feedback we've gotten specifically from city users. And if we can start getting it from the public as well, that'd be interesting. It's very compelling to me. It's um, if I could, I would at a moment, but it's it's always not what you do, it's what you're not doing when you're doing something. And, and that's been what been way on the line. Oh, the question was, uh, what about being able to submit 311 requests to the answer? So, so click on a button here and say, hey, I found a couple right here, and just be able to do it from the which is, again, a fantastic idea. Yes, sir. One is, I'm curious, like, as you're rolling this out to the city, uh, having worked in all these offices before, with their offices in front lines, so there are a lot of calls and a lot of times there's some questions like, is the state rep in my district? But what ward? But where's the pothole? And a lot of times you end up having all these different places to go. So I'm not sure how much as far as Windy Creek goes, you know, there's you know, an account system where you can have each, maybe each ward office has information, you know, of like a free one or one they can go to that they can easily refer themselves and other citizens to. It's sort of like one question. Um, the other question I have too is, uh, I think it's the collaboration potential is great, obviously, with this community. But I'm just kind of curious uh, if the value of the collaboration is so high, uh, what can people in this community do to just get these contracts directly and help them develop it for the city in a more of a direct and you know, mutually beneficial uh, partnership? Yeah, so we've been had, uh, especially the CIO has been pointing on. on uh, procurement issues and ways that we can make that better. I think there's a lot of experimentation going on right now. 18F has an interesting model. We'll see if that pans out. Uh, what's but really troublesome is you know, how there's a uh, city employee and CEO on trial now. Right? The sins of the past is what makes these burdens now. And so that's a really tough thing to balance. Right? Uh, how do we make it easy to do it, but how do we make sure that some of the bitches don't abuse it? Right? Because at the end of the day, this guy took $14,000, uh, at least allegedly so far. They're just pure profit. So we have to balance that. Uh, so I'm not, I don't think we can answer it. Uh, but something that is is interesting here is that we're able to work together in the open markets, right? working, working together with an open source project. And so people can contribute to the extent that they do want to, and not want to. The other thing, too, that's really important how we design this is uh, open grid, again, is not only just for the open portal, but it's also dependent on internal operations as well, which creates the onus on us to be able to make sure that we maintain it, to make sure that we don't let this thing wither and die, but we continue to make a concentrated investment into it while also collaborating with others. And that's that's going to be very key to this thing. So I don't want this project. And we see a lot of projects out there that are civic projects that won a hackathon a few years ago that, you know, they're four force now. We don't want that to be the case. And so we have to think through how we make sure this, is, this investment can be sustained. So your first question about the Alderman's office, uh, I actually have a meeting with them, uh, their reps, uh, next month, I think. We're going to go over this. We're going to go over a few other options. And I think in part, some of it's preloaded queries that it's going to help them help them with that. And, and they're a big constituent of us. Right. Last question. Yes. Are you going to make some kind of presentation to the journalists or the journalists? The journalists, we did this morning. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Excellent. Um, Dan and Tom, Tom, can you stick around for a little bit? Dan, you too? Uh, if anybody has follow-up questions, they'll be around uh, for you to ask them. Um, so now we're going to switch over to the civic hacking portion of the evening. Uh, we'll quickly go through the different breakout groups that we have. We have different people that are leading each group. We basically have two different tracks. One is uh, learning groups for learning skills with data and coding. Uh, and then there are uh, other... Uh, working groups for working on projects on an ongoing basis. So we'll go ahead and start with the learning groups real quick, uh, and I'll leave the leave that with Christopher. Hi, how many of you are here for the very first time? All right, All right. All right. yay! So if this is the first time here, <laughs> if the words civic hacking and open data and GitHub are new to you, uh, we have an orientation that explains uh, what open data is, what uh, open source is and the importance of community organizing in our work. Uh, we are going to have that right in the boardroom 
which is this big building or big door right here, uh, right over there. Great, excellent. Uh, code clinic. I think Carl and Renee are both here. Yeah, he's right. Here. Great. Uh, mob programming. Uh, anybody doing mob programming sessions today? I think Nick's not here. Okay. Um, it's not the last Tuesday of the week, so we're not doing Dolphin Tank, but. Uh, is it next week? Yeah, next week it'll be happening. If you have an idea for a Civic app and you want to get some feedback from a group of people who have done that kind of thing before, you can. Uh, the concept is like Shark Tank, but nice. <laughs> um, before I get to the working groups, just so you guys know, anybody is welcome to start their own group. All you have to do is just at the end raise your hand and say what you're working on, and, and anybody who wants to help you can uh, vote with their feet. Um, so uh, working groups, the first one listed, access to justice. Kusum. Tell us about that. Excellent. Thank you, Philson. Uh Tom, E. coli predictions. Yeah, so uh, another project that we've been working on in the open. Uh, we are working on predicting E. coli levels at Chicago beaches. Uh, in short, the, it takes too long to get the lab results back, so we have to reduce the statistical model to predict whether or not we should put an advisory today. The model that we're currently using is from the EPA. We don't think it's that good. So we're going to see whether or not we can develop a better model. Uh, uh, folks here have been working on it for some time. If it does work, the city of Chicago will use that statistical model. Uh, today, we're working on more statistical modeling side. We just started that here in our last session, so we'll continue that tonight. Uh, we did some confusion, confusion matrix work at our last one, uh, just to see what the accuracy levels were. And now we'll take a look at uh, some variables and start to formulate what the actual model will be. Cool. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Black Tech Mecca Ecosystem Network. Yes. So, as I Earlier, so the Black Tech have been working on how we can unlock full potential of the Black Tech community and drive the city forward and uh, move shop vision, transform Chicago into the global Black Tech Network. So, one important piece is going to be our ecosystem network platform, which is an online community platform that helps strengthen connection to the community and uh, quantify impact. So, we're making some pretty good progress on it so far. We have a link integration of the body in now, working on the LC, other people in the network. Working on a new speed now. So, uh, we're having some great great progress on that front. Uh, we're still looking for anybody with uh, product management experience or graphic designers who has folks in the room. Uh, feel free to join us tonight. Uh, I'll be standing right here and we can connect. Thanks, man. Uh, education, Josh. Yeah, um, so there's uh, kind of two, two ideas. Um, one, uh, local school council. Uh, Elections are coming up, and right now it's prepared to uh, register if you want to run. Um, I have a shape file of the voting district for most of the citywide schools, um, and combined with uh, the uh, neighborhood boundaries for uh, neighborhood schools, um, 
someone's interested in a, a relatively simple mapping project, um, you can take a few of those and uh, make a, a site to kind of figure out where what school someone could run for or vote for um, in the selection. Uh, the other uh, project that uh, Tim actually started talking about on Slack is taking a look at um, uh, CIWP, the Continuous Improvement Work Plan, which is a document that schools have to create uh, every two years and then we can update and track uh, data and metrics and some improvement. Um, and Private Central, which is a survey, um, look at that and see how um, all that can be made more useful for both the counties and school communities. Cool. Thanks, Josh. Uh, another education group, the Teach Tech Task Force. Hi. Um, so we are dedicated to supporting the next generation of civic tech leaders. Uh, as some of you might know, there is an exciting mandate to have every CPS student in the district have a computer science class before they graduate from high school and to really expand the CS for all program at CPS. So we're working to support that mission because although um, it's a mandate from CPS and the mayor. There isn't actually um, a, a logistical plan for how to train all of those teachers and get all of those schools well resourced. So that's uh, our big objective. Right now, we're building EduMap, which will be used in professional development workshops with CPS teachers. It's a tool for helping teachers to discover standards aligned to curriculum that they can use in their classroom. And we're looking for some developers who want to. Uh, play with Ruby on Rails, uh, some basic front end uh, stuff, and people who are excited about scraping curriculum and standards. Uh, we need to focus five. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Eve. Uh, Chicago Nursing Home Search. Nursing home time. Everyone's favorite topic. Raise your hand if you like nursing homes. <laughs> sure, why not? Me too. All right. So, Illinois recently got an F on nursing homes. Woo! I agree. I can't remember the name of it. And the reason is mostly staffing. We have very poor staffing at some of our nursing homes. So what I've got here is a proof of concept uh, that I made. Um, the problem I've got is this data is uh, not that great. So I need people who are interested in data and I need people who want to play journalists because I've lined up like 38 interviews and I have no plans for how to <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, if you want to help, I'll be in one of those rooms back that way. Excellent. Uh, pensions. All right, what's more fun than nursing homes? <laughs> 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 so, we've uh, we been working on some mathematical models of the old pensions that allow you to uh, adjust sliders called uh, displayed and shiny. And we're trying to explain the uh, pension problem and help people think about different solutions. But as I mentioned, we're Oh, look at that. Hey, We're very close sense. to uh, being able to launch this thing. We need some help with uh, implementing some new visualizations and cleaning up a few bugs in the models. We have our very own uh, user experience consultant who's helping us make this thing look not like that, but something that you can actually use to explain this and uh, gain some insight in. So we're usually in focus now. Focus on. Very cool. Got some sliders, some knobs here. Very cool. Uh, all right. Uh, mapping the demand for better transit. So uh, we're mapping the density of people taking buses around the city. I'll show you how many people have a bus per mile in the second street. Try to identify where there are uh, enough riders to warrant something better than buses stuck in traffic, like a dedicated bus lane or a bus service dedicated lane. So if you're interested in those issues, you can meet in this um, right there. Cool. Uh, another transportation one, PBR, personalized bike routing. Anybody? Zane? Yeah, so we uh, want to come up with a bike driving system that's taking into account the quality, and we're measuring pavement quality. The uh, phone accelerometer is not going to bike. Uh, we could use anybody to do a lot of things, but uh, one thing we're going to try to do is going to stand up the routing engine this week. So if you are going to do that, you can just stop. <laughs> cool. Uh, and then last one listed uh, Robert, you're here, or someone else from the Ride With Me group. It's you. Hi. Yeah. Uh, 
Cool. Thanks, Robert. So that's it for the listed groups. Like I said, if anybody wants to start a group, they're welcome to raise their hand. You got one? Code, do Code Dojo? It's Code Dojo time. So I'm pretty new. I didn't know this existed. Or I wouldn't have been doing this real last time. So we teach 717 uh, year old kids. Our curriculum is open source. We're, everything's open source, you know, being that we're a nonprofit. Uh, we need help in Django. Curriculum writing, uh, we have a Slack channel. We're always looking for mentors, and we're always looking for people that want to grow our org. Um, everything's voted on by volunteers and the, the team. So uh, I will be here, I don't have a room. Yeah. Cool. So. Awesome. Uh, anybody else? Um, there's one project that uh, a few of us were talking about yesterday on Slack. Um, you guys know we don't have a budget. Like the state doesn't have like a budget, and it's been how long now? Eight months, something like that. Seven, right? Exactly. So uh, the idea is let's make a giant clock that says how long it's been since we've had a budget, and t and then list out all the consequences and all the. I mean, I feel like every week I read an article about this agency had to close because they finally ran out of money, and you know this is these are the consequences of not having a budget. So that's the premise. So if anybody wants to work on that, um, I'll probably be in the cafeteria area um, when I'm at the open leadership meeting. Um, has anybody else got a, a group they want to start? There's probably going to have to wait for us to get but uh, I noticed uh, my, the crowdsourced GIS group is going to go into the back and back now. I'm going to wrap up some stuff in the conference that already kind of like the guys who do that. So I'm going to get to people. But I'm very inspired by the project tonight, and uh, the theme of that group is supposed to be uh, crowdsourced, uh, interactive, and mapping. So I'm going to take a look about it, and we want to talk about it. And I think it's like maybe there might be a way that we can work with the folks in gray and get some sort of like uh, I interactive mapping to this on the top of it. Cool. Sure. It's a place for it. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Okay, reminder, if you want to do the open leadership meeting thing, that's around 8, 8.15 in that big room. Thanks to Microsoft, they bought the empanadas tonight. Um, in case you're wondering, it's from Arazu, they're on Milwaukee, Costa Rican, super good. Um, thanks again to Braintree for uh, hosting us as usual. Uh, please clean up after yourselves because we love this space and we want to be nice. Uh, thank you again to our presenters and go forth and hack on stuff. Thank you.